Hi, thank you and welcome. My name is Peter Lavinia. I'm the co-chair of the Green Party of New York. With me are Mark Dunley, a former Green candidate for Comptroller, and C.J. Chapman, a longtime activist and local Green Party member. Uh, we're here to outline and discuss the Green Party of New York's 2019 legislative agenda to provide a bold vision of an eco-socialist New York, one where workers are empowered, basic human rights and needs are respected, and important social programs expanded, the climate crisis is tackled with the urgency required, and our criminal justice system is reformed to end racist policies of mass incarceration, communities devastated by the drug war are rebuilt, and our voting system reformed to expand democratic choice. We don't suffer any illusions that the newly Democratic Party-controlled legislature will act boldly and decisively on these issues. There are no more excuses to passing progressive legislation. Yet after decisively winning the state senate last month, their leadership began to immediately temper expectations on reforms they had long promised during the era of Republican Senate control. <clears throat> the GP intends to do what it takes to help build a movement to enact our agenda, both inside the Capitol and in the streets. Our 2019 legislative agenda represents green values for New York. Real action on climate change, real electoral reform, single-payer universal health care, and marijuana legalization and criminal justice reform. I'd like to introduce Mark Dunley, a longtime environmental activist, and most recently the Green Party candidate for Comptroller, who will speak about the need for New York to take immediate action on climate change. Uh, thank you, Peter. Recently, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change came out with a, a new report that said the world only had 12 years left to act in order to avoid climate chaos, um, the destruction of civilization as we presently know it. And we need to remember that the IPCC is actually a fairly uh, conservative body uh, because of the need to get both agreement among all these different scientists who tend to have a very narrow uh, focus on one particular aspect of the climate change. And second, because they needed to get governments to sign off of it. Um, particularly, uh, both the United States and Saudi Arabia uh, were quite troublesome in getting that IPCC report out. Uh, and they also rely upon a miracle technology to allow us to continue uh, to survive, which is basically after spending $20, $30 billion, we're nowhere close to the technology to bring uh, carbon out of the atmosphere. So that was the IPC report. Conservative saying we got 12 years left to act, unprecedented worldwide cooperation, and that particularly we need to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees centigrade, not the 2 degrees centigrade that the United States and New York State is pursuing, such as our present goals of 50 percent. Um, renewable energy for electricity by, by 2030, or a goal of trying to go to net zero carbon emissions by, by 2050. It's also been quite exciting that in the last uh, month, um, the Sunrise Movement and uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, a new socialist Democrat candidate uh, for Congress who was elected uh, from Queens and, and uh, Bronx, has called for a Green New Deal something that the Green Party here in New York State started calling for with the Howie Hawkins campaign for governor in 2010. And it's really exciting to see so much effort going behind this. Uh, unlike a lot of other Democrats who have used the Green New Deal as a slogan to make the point, the valid point, that working on climate change is also the path to good living, um, living wage jobs, um, she also made the point that we need to move to 100% clean power by 2030, and that also any action on climate change must be combined with an economic bill of rights, single-payer health care, the, the right to housing, um, the right to a job, the right to education. Very similar to what the, the Green Party has been talking about with the Green New Deal. So there are some things she doesn't mention. We talk, for instance, about the need to cut the military budget by 50% in order to finance partially the uh, transition to 100% clean energy. She doesn't talk a lot about the um, issue of public ownership and democratic control of our energy system, which we think is uh, critical. And for some reason, hopefully an oversight, she does not, in her proposal, call 
for an immediate halt to all new fossil fuel infrastructure. But the fact that she's been able to put the Green New Deal on the agenda, not only of Congress, but of many environmental and climate change groups is quite exciting. And we hope that the New York State Legislature follows through and adopts something similar to the Green New Deal. Now, in New York right now, that's the 100% um, renewable energy by 2030 slash or Fossil Fuels Act, which is some of them Colton is the lead sponsor of. Uh, it calls for not only the state, but also for local governments to adopt enforceable climate action plans. Uh, it talks about um, immediate halt to any new fossil fuel infrastructure, and it talks about requiring new buildings, as California has already done, uh, to be zero carbon emissions. One point we'd also would make is that we would expect the legislature to take more aggressive action this session to reject the governor's uh, push to build two new gas turbines uh, about a mile from here on Sheridan Avenue in a low-income community in order to power the state buildings, uh, to provide both heat uh, and uh, electricity. Um, we should be doing, especially at the state capitol, 100% renewable energy, starting with heating and cooling with geothermal, and then using uh, distributed energy from solar and wind for um, the electricity. Um, you know, obviously I just recently ran for state controller, a big focus remains, the need to get the state uh, controller, Tom DiNapoli, to agree to divest the state pension funds from fossil fuels. Literally the world, other than Donald Trump, has said that we're going to end our use of fossil fuels. Uh, this is an industry which does not have a future. Uh, and in fact, the study done by Corporate Nice shows that if the state had divested uh, 10 years ago, when Tom DiNapoli was first appointed as controller, uh, the state pension fund had an extra $22 billion. So it's morally wrong to invest uh, in the destruction of the planet by keeping $11 billion, $12 billion in fossil fuels, but it's all a bad financial risk. You know, it was nice that uh, Mr. DiNapoli flew out to Poland um, to announce that he's adding another $3 billion to his low carbon fund up to $10 billion, only means he has $200 billion to go uh, to get it right. Um, just briefly, I do want to mention that, you know, as part of the effort to move to 100% clean energy, having a robust carbon tax uh, would be very helpful uh, in order to start making the corporate pollutants because by burning uh, fossil fuels. We have a bill that, that we drafted with a similar member, um, Cahill, uh, from the New Pulse area, along with uh, Kevin Parker, uh, that we would like to see pass. We are concerned uh, that the governor may be trying to weaken uh, some approaches to the carbon tax. Uh, he's talking about doing regional transportation by expanding the cap and trade program regi to include transportation. Um, it's kind of interesting that when he bailed out uh, nuclear power plants of $7.6 billion, he used a figure of $40 per ton. That's the social price of carbon. Uh, Ray, Reggie only charges $6 a ton uh, for carbon, and that's not the type of um, carbon tax or carbon program we need to really cut um, you know, emissions. And, and one thing you need to remember, the governor focuses very, very heavily on trying to reduce emissions from uh, electricity. Electricity accounts for less than one quarter of the state's carbon footprint. The two biggest footprints are coming from transportation and from heating and, and cooling buildings, and that needs a lot more uh, effort. And at this point, I turn it back to Peter. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'd like to talk very briefly about uh, another part of our 2019 legislative agenda, uh, electoral reform. Uh, we've heard a lot about reforming the legislature in recent days, specifically about uh, banning outside income, uh, or at least capping it to 15%, uh, getting rid of Lulu's. Uh, I, the Green Party would like to see a full-time legislature, uh, a ban on outside income, uh, and moving toward making legislators uh, um, uh, not be able to be lobbyists after the end of their full terms. Uh, we'd like to see public financing system instituted as well, a full funding system like Maine or Arizona has. Um, we'd also like to see electoral reform, specifically ranked choice voting and proportional representation discussed by the legislature. Um, it's an absolutely crucial part of expanding democracy in New York. Uh, we've just seen that in Maine uh, with a successful RCV election under their belts. 
Um, the reason we need ranked choice voting is simple. A winning candidate should receive the absolute majority of the vote, not just plurality. Uh, it's a basic principle of democracy. The majority should rule. Uh, in New York, that's just not the case. Um, voters rank their top choices in an RC RCV election. Um, candidates receiving the lowest number of votes each round would be eliminated. Voters' votes would be distributed in succeeding rounds, so somebody has over 50% of the vote. Um, pretty simply, the majority rules in an RCV election, pretty simple, uh, would eliminate the so-called spoiler effect, uh, which Greens hear about every election cycle, mostly from Democrats. Uh, if the Democratic Party is serious about eliminating the spoiler effect, as they say they are uh, every year, uh, they should move quickly to pass RCV uh, for every level of elections around the state. And I believe that about uh, 10 or 15 years ago, Senator Kruger did introduce a bill on RCV. Uh, we hope to see now that the legislature is in control of the Democratic Party that they move swiftly on this. Uh, we think that RCV isn't enough, though. We need proportional representation. Uh, we support a wholesale change in how we elect the state legislature. Parties should receive seats based on the proportion of the vote that they get statewide. We could end gerrymandering and represent more voices in the state legislature through this. The state could become one large electoral district that encompasses all legislative seats. Voters could cast votes for lists of candidates from each party. Each party would receive a percentage of seats based on their vote totals. Many legislatures around the world are elected via this method, and they're more diverse. Women, minorities, the young and working class are seated in higher percentages than our legislatures. It would provide real choice to New Yorkers, make every vote count, and bring new ideas in the state government. Now I'd like to introduce C.J. Chapman to talk about a burning issue, single-payer universal health care. Thank you. Universal health care is something the majority of Americans support. All of us deserve, and we in New York State can make a reality. Health care is a human right, which is why the Green Party calls on the New York State Legislature to pass the New York Health Act. I'm a disabled mother of a three-month-old son. Both of us are on Medicaid, and while I'm grateful for that every day, I dread opening each letter we get from DSS because it might be the letter that says we lose our coverage. Meanwhile, my partner has insurance through his employer, but his co-pays and deductibles are so high, he's essentially paying for a plan that we can't afford to use. Our situation is not unique. Millions across the state are underinsured and unable to get health care they need due to financial barriers imposed by insurance and pharmaceutical companies. The New York Health Act solves these problems for families like mine by making health care accessible, affordable, and guaranteed. Not just for us, but for all New Yorkers. Thanks to wide support and dedicated organizing, the New York Health Act has passed in the Assembly for the past four years and was co-sponsored by almost half of our state senators. There's now a Democratic majority in both houses, but we know we cannot count on politicians to do something just because it's right or to keep their promises without pressure. That's why the Green Party of New York State is committed to continuing the grassroots organizing necessary to hold our senators and governor accountable and to get New York Health passed and signed into law. Our opponents claim that New York cannot afford the New York Health Act, but we have several studies that show universal health care in New York and nationally is financially viable and that a single payer system would actually lower health care costs by $45 billion in the first year alone. Passing universal single payer health care will be liberating for all working people in New York. The only losers will be those who profit from the current unsustainable and inhumane status quo. As Greens, we are part of a movement of New Yorkers demanding change, and we call on the legislature to make passing universal single-payer health care a top priority this session for families like mine and for all of us. Thank you, CJ. Uh, finally, I'd like to talk about marijuana legalization and criminal justice reform. Marijuana legalization is long overdue in New York State. 63% of New Yorkers support it. The New York State Comptroller issued a report last May stating it could bring an additional $1.3 billion in revenue to state and local governments. We believe the state should ensure that big business does not have a stranglehold on the industry. 
We believe that residents should be allowed to grow cannabis at home. Sales should be regulated, um, either through state-owned or operated stores or cooperative-run local businesses. Um, former nonviolent drug offenders should be offered living wage jobs at these stores, or they should be allowed to compete um, for uh, licenses uh, to uh, be the first to sell marijuana in stores. All marijuana should be required to be organically grown and non-GMO, and they should be it should be taxed at normal sales tax rates. The state should not make a profit from sin taxes off of marijuana. We also believe that marijuana cannot be legalized without wholesale criminal justice reform in New York State. This is not just an issue of revenue, but it is uh, intimately tied with criminal justice reform. Nearly 800,000 people have been arrested over the last 20 years in New York on marijuana charges, the majority of them minorities. Whole communities have been devastated by the war on drugs and its racist policies of mass incarceration. All nonviolent drug offenders should be released and follow California's lead in having their drug records automatically expunged. The additional revenue brought in for marijuana sales should be directed towards rebuilding communities devastated by the war on drugs and mass incarceration. Releasing nonviolent offenders should be ensured restitution, including employment, housing, and health services, and restoration of their civil rights and liberties. New York should move toward considering the Portuguese model of harm reduction. Portugal has decriminalized all drugs. We should consider this. Um, drug addicts should be provided safe places to inject, and treatment centers for those who want it should replace incarceration. Portugal has seen remarkable success with this model, and New York State should follow suit. Um, at this point in time, I'd like to take questions uh, from the audience, uh, if they have, directed at any of our panelists. 